it's good to be back for the second time. <laughs> and now we had a great time last time, and I'm sure the Holy Spirit is ready to minister to us today. Amen. So, yes, it is. He never yeah. leaves us, no forsake, right? No forsake. <laughs> So briefly, we're going to recap or just go over what we did last time. And uh, for part two, we have been, you know, led to do the fruit of the spirit. As we know, uh, the fruit of the spirit <clears throat> is the opposite of the fruit of the flesh. <laughs> the fruit of the flesh is not the day. We want to exalt uh, the good part, the Amen. fruit of the spirit. But before that, we want to uh, just mention a little quick of what we did last time and i'll be reading on my notes so don't worry that i'm looking down over <laughs> my notes yeah i'm gonna just mention a little quick number one thing we say the function of the holy spirit uh, uh is number one brings freedom and that is you're going to see <clears throat> or find it in a scripture we do believe you love the bible you love the word be like uh the sense of uh uh which sons are those? Um, they were going back and looking up the scriptures. The scriptures yeah. Uh, yeah. You don't just take, you know, yeah. a preacher's word and run with it. Go in yeah. the Bible. Look it for yourself. Mm -hmm. and, uh, <clears throat> oh, the Berean church. Thank you. The yeah. Berean church had a habit not to just receive a preacher and, oh, and say it, so that doesn't know. Go and... <laughs> Read it for yourself. And as you do, believe me, you, God will give you even more. Even more of what, yeah, mm -hmm. what you have heard. More from that very scripture telling you to go read. All right. So we say the Holy Spirit, his function or his work to us now is to bring freedom. And that you want to see in 2 Corinthians 3, 17. We are not going to read. We are recapping. Glory to God. And the function number two. We said he is here to comfort us. Hmm. I mean, he's here to comfort us, and he is here to uh, fellowship with us, to give us company, and mm. to live with us forever. I think I need to read that one. Let's mm. go to uh, uh, I think it's John 14. It is John 14. I want that because you know what? We are relational people. Oh, I feel it. We are people of, of to relate to one another. We are not meant to be isolated. No. To be somewhere just, you know, on our own little cubicle or something. We are to relate to one another. And sometimes, like this COVID has taught us, as you, you can really live by your, by yourself with your COVID. <laughs> <laughs> but in that time when you feel like you are all by yourself, don't believe that. You are not. No, yeah, you're not. You are not. You are not and never you will be alone. You will be accompanied. Again, yeah, it's your choice to be accompanied by the our God or to be accompanied by the God of this world. Yes. But you will never be alone. You will exactly. have a company of some nature. Even Amen. or... <laughs> that's something that somebody needs to grab right there <laughs> you will always have a company that's right I'm here to bring the good company the company Amen. which cares Amen. the company which brings hope yes. healing and sense of you know of, 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 of self you yes. know sometimes we step on us ourselves so hard and we feel like, oh, why am I even here? Yeah. Only for a reason. So you always gonna be with the company. Okay. So uh, John uh, sixteen, no fourteen. Mm -hmm. John fourteen. I'm gonna start. I, I think we need to, to talk of this one a little quick. Bear mm -hmm. with us. I know we're introducing a new chapter, but let's see this one. I feel this strongly to 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 read here. Sixteen until twenty. It says like I'm using amplified version of the bible and it goes like this and i will ask this is jesus talking telling the disciple the function of the holy spirit will take place when he goes yes. and i will ask my father and he will give you another helper and this helper in bracket again this is king uh, amplified comforter or advocate 
or counselor or the one to stand by, not mm -hmm. one time, but to be with you, how long? Forever. <laughs> forever. Amen. Forever. Is your relationship shaking? He's with you forever. Amen. Amen. And your finances, you don't go to the mall and to pick that and feel that, ooh, ooh, and feel that, you know, joy that you got a, a, a shoe or got, you got something good. Is that like running away from you? He is with you forever to Amen. give you that, that you are, you know what, you don't need it, that good address. And because it's expensive, you don't have it. Don't sit there and cry yourself to sleep. Know that he loves you and you are with him forever. forever. Yes. He is with us forever. You feel weak. You, he is with us forever. I was talking to my sister about her, <laughs> her, her testimony about, you know, the very power, yes, which you wrote, uh, caused Jesus to come up of that grave, yes, and raise up from it. <laughs> That's yeah. a topic of another day. He yeah. is with you, He is with us. Glory to God. 17. The spirit of truth, because sometimes we are being cheated and denied, and you know, mm -hmm. uh, told some promises and never comes to pass. He is with us if we need the truth. And sometimes the truth about us, really. <laughs> yes. Like uh, I talked about this uh, a few days ago about a light of the tissue bite. He came a point, he started evaluating himself. Maybe I'm not all that. Maybe I'm just like my father. You know, I, I better die because mm. my father died too. I'm no different. He, he started leaving away the truth about him and say, you know what? I'm just like my forefathers. I'm going to just die as I did. Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> like now for us, you know, oh, like mother, like daughter. Okay, your mother died with cancer. I'm, I'm next. Your father died with the prostate. I'm next. I mean, we deny the truth mm -hmm. that we are now really the sons and daughters of God. God yes. Amen. So we need the truth. He is there. Not once again. Amen. He is there forever. Ooh, I don't want to preach out of that. I'm going <laughs> to. So you go read from 16 to 20 to get that. And let the Holy Spirit really give you all you need to hear. Number Amen. three, we say that he directs and he leads and he guides. And that is in Romans 8 verse 9. Use amplified that speaks very much better there yeah. on that one. If, yeah, just go read use that. And number four function we say is the Holy Spirit is here to remind us, and we remind us of who of Jesus. The same chapter we just read. I don't want to go there because I will start teaching again. He reminds us of the Lord Jesus, and when we are we are not sure of who He is. Yes what he came to do, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. did you really heal me? Did you really come and died for me to really, really? Yeah, he yes. will remind you of all mm -hmm. that. Read John mm -hmm. 16, 26 there. Okay, number five, he produces the fruits in our lives. lives. Function, mm -hmm. we are going mm -hmm. to today. Feel mm -hmm. free to be going to mention glory to God. And that one you're going to read in Romans 8, 10, through 13, you're going to get that one there. And also he teaches us. He's our teacher. The same John yes. 14. You're going to get that teaching there. How he teaches because he is a spirit of truth. Yes. And when he does bring that truth, you are set free. Why? Because the Bible tells us, right? Yes, he does tell us. The truth you're going to know the truth and? And the truth will set you free. Amen. Glory to God. So he will Amen. teach you right there. And number seven, I'm about, about finish. He helps us. He is our helper. I mean, he will do all that you need help with to yes. figure out the business. He's there. Like my sister shared last time that, you know, she was about to enter into this business with this individual, but because she knew where to go before to say yes. Yes. <laughs> Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
You are rescued yes, from losing yes, I was love. rescued. Praise the Lord. <laughs> oh, wow. Yes. Amen. Yes. He guides, Love he helps. Him. Glory to God. Number eight. Uh, oh, number seven, you go read a Roman 8, 26 through 27. And number eight, to function, he gives life to our bodies. I mean, he revives us. He does what God only can do, not diet, not taking good care of you, not the genes of your, you know, sometimes they say, oh, your family has a gene genetics to live long. Or... Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> because you are in that very family, so you walk with, the, you know, like, mm, we, we, are, we are skinny people in our family, yes, so no exactly. worry about being, hmm. <laughs> okay? But I mean, he is with us forever to give life to our, these mortal bodies, this yes. very mortal bodies, he yes. can absolutely take care of this very body. Amen. Glory to God. So go ahead and read Roman 8 again to get more about you being assured and never to ever have doubt that you are a child okay. of God. Yes, you are a child of God. You are born of the spirit. And this very spirit we are going to talk about today. And uh, without no <clears throat> explanation of anything, I would like to invite my sister to carry us through to a few uh, fruit of the spirit so that we can get to our topic today. And I really, really can't wait to hear what the Holy Spirit has to explain himself. <laughs> Amen. Explain oh, himself. Hallelujah. Explain it's himself. Welcome, Amen. sister. Thank you so much, sister Andrew. Hallelujah. Um, it's so amazing that we are talking about him, but he's the one who's actually helping us to talk about him. He's the one who's reminding us and reviving us and directing us to do all this. So amazing. It's so uh, exciting to have this kind of relationship with this kind of God. Amen. <laughs> so we are going to talk about the fruit of the spirit today, like the way Sister Andrew has said, and we're going to go direct to this very famous book, uh, Galatians 5, verse 22 and 23, and we're going to read there to see what it says about the fruit of the spirit. Amen. So Galatians uh, chapter 5, verse 22 and 23, it says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self control. Against, against, such, the, against such, there is no law. Amen. So those are the fruit of the Spirit. I say fruit, but we, we just kind of noticed there the word fruit is singular. In my Bible, it is singular. And uh, it's a Greek word. I learned that it's a Greek word. It's also, it has the same meaning, meaning in Latin as well. So it's a Greek word. Um, and I'll spell it because I don't know if I'm saying it right. It's called kapos. K-A-R-P-O-S. Um, and pretty much it means fruit or it means uh, the natural product of a living thing, you know, it's a fruit. Um, it has the same meaning uh, in Latin as well. So I was, I was happy to learn that. And I was so fascinated about this because of the way Paul, uh, the Holy Spirit um, led Paul to talk, to use the word fruit of the Spirit, because I, I think it's really intentional so that we know it's not independent characteristics, even though they are mentioned like nine of them, you know, uh, from Galatians 5, 22, 23, but it's not an indi independent char characteristics. They are like unified. Uh, they, are, they are integrated. They depend on each other. And it's just one fruit. It's a singular word. And this kind of reminds me that Sister Andrew has um, written a nice book. It's called Fruit of the Spirit. The very same thing that we are talking about today. And this book I had the privilege to read. It's an amazing book. It's good. Maybe our viewers need to know that it's good for all, everybody in your family, for your children, for, for your teens, for, for adults, it's a very good book. By the way, it's written by Andrew's family all together. <laughs> yeah, so 
it's a very good book. Um, you can read it to your children and you can um, you can have your children read to the, for themselves, for the ones who can read. But I'm sure they will enjoy to understand uh, the fruit of the spirit and the way they work uh, together. And she did a, such a good job explaining this um, unified whole, what I'm talking about, that it's not uh, independent characteristics. She did amazing. She elaborated each one of them and um, she showed how they depend on each other, how they work together, how without the other, the other one is not really going to function, you know, and maybe God willing, when you get a chance, we'll get to that. But Sister Andrew, I know you have that book in English and Swahili. Where can our viewers get that book? <laughs> uh, our viewers can get that book uh, from uh, two sources. Uh -huh. It's a noble for hardcover and also on Amazon for soft cover. I have a soft version or soft cover version of it. It's just like this one. I mean, yeah. beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> and uh, it has illustration. I mean, just get it and you will see by yourself. And amen, amen. So they, they have heard that they can go to Barnes and Nobles and um, Amazon to get that book, The Fruit of the Spirit by um, Sister Ando and her family, amazing book. But that's what I'm talking about. This fruit is a singular. And we're going to explain more how this works a little bit. But it's important for you to know that it is uh, a unified whole. You know, it's not really independent. Um, and also, uh, I, I was fascinated about it just to read that um, um, it's a fruit. So he wants to under us get to for us to understand that it's something that I mean to understand the process of how it works. You know, because when you say the fruit, it's easier for us to get it because everybody knows fruit of some sort, and we know fruit don't just fall from the air we have to build to to plant a seed a tree has to come up you know we have to take care of it and then and then after that you know if it has been taken care of well then then it will produce fruit and we'll enjoy that fruit it will be sweet and beautiful different colors and by the way this book i'm talking about it has all those kind of fruits drawn and with beautiful colors i really enjoy reading that book but yeah, so I, I believe even Paul was given this illustration to help us understand how the fruit of the spirit is produced within us. You know, it's produced through the Holy Spirit, but also it's a process. It's a process just like the, the natural fruit that, that is grown. It's a process. And it's important for our viewers to know that it's the Holy Spirit who's actually producing this fruit inside of the believer. And it's not the believer who is actually producing it. I think we're going to deal with that. We're going to read a little bit of scriptures and they can understand. You guys can understand more about uh, what is happening. So we're going to talk about it, but I don't want to get into it first without really uh, kind of giving you that uh, um, um, uh, introduction of the fruit itself. And uh, we're going to touch base maybe um, two or three, depending on the time that we have, and actually explain a real bit about how the Holy Spirit works within us to produce those um characteristic of its fruit. I'm trying to be careful here to make sure you understand it's just one. <laughs> it's one and it's not many. But sister, if you can open Ezekiel 36 for me, verse 27, let's see what that says. And while you are opening Ezekiel, I will open uh, First Corinthians chapter three, um, and we can we can read the word and see what the word says about you know the fruit of the spirit and how the spirit works in us. Good, good. Ezekiel thirty six, you say? Yes, verse twenty seven. Right, thirty six twenty seven. Here we come. 
It says, I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statues and you will keep my ordinances and do them. Amen. I, I picked that scripture because I know it has been written in the Old Testament before the Holy Spirit started dwelling inside man. But that's exactly what he said he was going to do. It was a, a prophecy that the Holy Spirit will come within us and cause us to bear fruit, to follow God's statutes, to really obey God and actually have that character of God. This, this, the, the, the characteristics of the fruit of the Spirit is the character of God, long-suffering, love, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. That's who God is, and he's sharing a part of himself with us. So when the Holy Spirit comes to the lives of the believer, then we starting to grow. You know, there's a process of us working with the Holy Spirit and start growing these characteristics that he himself is the one producing inside of us. Amen. Amen. So, Sister Ando, you want to share any of the fruit of the Spirit? I mean, the characteristics? I'm trying to correct myself there. <laughs> yeah, the characteristics, one of them, uh, one of them is is uh, what we call it, endurance. You know, our God endures with us, you know, waiting to, for us to get it right, uh, bearing with us when we're wrong and uh, forgiving us over and over again, that the character of God uh, shared with us, as you say, sis, that he, that, this is him and uh, sharing himself with us is, is, is love than, is just love itself. Like, I love you so much. I want you to be in my, it's like that, but he said, let's mm -hmm. create in our image and after our own likeness. So yeah. it's like, I just share with you this part of me, you know, go ahead and do it. So it's, 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 a, it's a wake up call for some of us who failed to do that failed to be patient, failed to keep on keeping on. Yeah. You know, easily quitting, easily letting go, easily getting tired. We need to know we need that fruit more because yeah. uh, God has put it, uh, you know, in display for us to grab and, and be like he is. So I'm back to say that for now. Amen, amen. And you know, um, this is amazing and it is so true. I, I, want, I want just to encourage somebody who is maybe new um, in faith or maybe who does not know the Lord um, at this moment and you are interested and you're wondering what we are talking about and maybe you're looking for that change in your life and maybe you're tired. Of, of the way you are and you just want to change, you're desiring to be, to have, to be somebody who loves people or love yourself or love God. You are desiring to be somebody who is patient. You are desiring to have peace in your life. Peace is very, very important. And you're wondering how come, maybe you're even born again, but you just don't keep the peace of God, you know, you feel like you, you don't have it, um, and, and the Bible says that in, in um, John 14, 27, that Jesus left us his peace, he said he gave us his peace, and so you do have the peace of God, so you're wondering how come sometimes I don't have peace, uh, it's, it's a work process between you and the Holy Spirit, because when the Holy Spirit came to dwell within you, he brought all these things with him, because that's what it is. He, that's who he is. He is all what we are reading about. So he's bringing all that to you. But I think for me, uh, I feel that it's very important uh, for, for our, our, our viewers right now to know that they already have all these things within them. They just need to channel that with the Holy Spirit. First, believe that you have it. And second, work with the Holy Spirit because he is going to prompt you. He's going to remind you. He's 
going to give you that nag in your spirit, like, don't do this, um, do this instead, um, because it's going to lead you in a place where you're going to get peace. Um, peace is very important. This world doesn't offer a lot of peace. This world does not offer much peace. Look around. Look, read the news. I mean, uh, listen to the news. Read the the the, the newspapers. Um, just open your phone. You will see how much this world um, like peace. You know, peace, peace, peace. There is no peace. You know, even when they say there is peace, there is no peace, really. Um, but Jesus has offered a peace that does not leave you. It stays within you and it's constant. It doesn't matter what circumstances you are going through. Uh, I just kind of remember um, when I'm saying this, I remember when I was raising my two boys, uh, it was a very hectic moment. When they were younger, they're three years apart. When they were younger, I am a full-time student. I mean, not full-time student, part-time student and full-time worker and full-time mom and a wife. And uh, I have to run around, you know, take my kids to the daycare, go to work. I get phone calls sometimes, such and such is sick. You make phone calls to the doctor, you run from work, grab your baby, figure out how you can put the, uh, where you can put the other one, run to the hospital, figure out what to do next day. Should you call out? Should you know who's going to help you babysit the other one? Maybe a car, your car break down. I mean, there was so much going on in my life. That, that was a very hectic moment, I would say. But really what I realized is that I went through it so differently compared to the people who do not know the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ. Because yes, I felt stressed. I wouldn't say I, I didn't. Yes, that sometimes I felt overwhelmed. But the moment that the Holy Spirit reminds me that I have this thing, I have this peace already, I just need to channel it, then I just tune my mind, I, I, I just turn it and focus on God, and then trusting him to take care of everything, and that peace just comes and just covers you, so even though your situation is so horrible, then people around you, they're like, why are you not freaking out, why are you not going crazy, why are you not cussing around, why are you not really um, losing your mind, it's just because I just realized I have this peace of God and it's not leaving me. It's just there. It doesn't change despite of my circumstances. It's just there to just keep me calm and, and, and sane and help me focus on God and let God take care of my situation. So the Holy Spirit is so real. In that case, for the peace of God, it's like, really, I treasure that because I, I I know without it, I don't know where I would have been, you know, it's just, I don't know where I would have been without the peace of, that Jesus brings in my life. So you're not faking it, it's real, it's coming to you, you know, you're not faking it, you know, it's, it's the same way with love, you know, for love, you're not really faking to love people, when you're born again, the Bible is telling us that the Holy Spirit pours the love of God inside of, inside the believer and you just love people. You know, sometimes when we say I pray for you, I know if you're, in, if you're out there, you're listening to us and if somebody said to you, I'm praying for you and you got offended because maybe you felt like they're saying you are not, uh, you are, you are not a good person or whatever, uh, you know, because people who are, do not understand God or do not know God, they get offended by him at, at sometimes. And when somebody says, I pray for you, they really mean it. They know that they know per the person who can actually help your situation. They can help you and they love you so much that they want to pray to open that door for you to get that help. So when somebody's saying, I'm praying for you, you get offended, just know that that's a proof that you do not know the one who actually can help you, you know, so accept it. And, but I'm trying to say on the other side, we, we pray for our, 
our, our enemies. We pray for those who oppresses us. We pray for those who wrong, wrong, wrong us in one way or the other, not because of anything else, not because we want a wrath of God to come on them. No, it's because we actually love them and we know the force that is behind whatever they did and we want God to intervene. So there will be peace, there will be love, there will be reconciliation, you know? We, we care about people and we love them. Sometimes it's just very, um, it just wows me because sometimes it's so real that this person really is really not good to you. And they, they're, <laughs> they're talking behind your back. <laughs> they're, they're just not good person, people, and, you know, but they're, they're doing wrong things to you. But I don't know. I cannot explain to you, my viewer, but the love of God that the Holy Spirit puts in you, it just doesn't allow you to, to carry hatred or hold grudges or anything like that. It's, it's just pushing you to love that person and, and care even more and even do good things to them. You cannot do that without the power of the Holy Spirit. Am I right or wrong? You cannot, you cannot do it. Cannot. Yes, yes. Yeah, you cannot do it. I know that I've gone through different situations that I could say, okay, you know, this is bad. And people have come to me and say, this person, I don't know what you're going to do, but if I were you, I would do this and this and this to this person. And there's nothing in me that says, oh, yeah, let me do this. I can't even do it because I changed so much. I mean, the Holy Spirit has given me so much love and care and joy. The only thing I can say is just to love them and hug them <laughs> and care for them. Do I get offended? I do. I cannot lie, but really I don't dwell on that because the Holy Spirit will not allow me to do it. He will just kind of pour more love and remind me to really bring out this fruit that I'm talking, this part, the characteristics that I'm talking about. Amen. So I, I just wanted to share that with you, that everything that the Holy Spirit says is bringing, he's really bringing. It's just Work with him so that you can see the fruit of it. You can see. But it's also, don't get discouraged when you don't see all of this happening at once. It could be that you're a very impatient person. And the Holy Spirit will take some time to bring you to be a patient person, you know. Um, because it's a process. Like we said, it's a fruit. So you have to actually work it out, you know, to grow. Grow with them. That way... One day, as you are obeying him, as you're following his lead, one day you find yourself being patient on a situation that you never expected to be patient. And you look back, you'll be like, the old me is gone indeed. Because if it was the old me, I wouldn't, I wouldn't handle this situation the way I did, you know? So God is good. Uh, the Holy Spirit is good. I don't know what else you wanted to add over there, but um, um, I wanted to talk about peace and love today. So, yeah. Amen. Amen. Peace and love. Glory to God. Especially in such time as this, we have covered those two uh, uh, characters of this one hall. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, yes. so we just you know picked those two, and uh, as you you are uh, insisting that really this such a time as this for our viewers, even for ourselves, we see that need of peace. You know, yeah. everywhere so much need of peace. We so need the peace, and if we jump on love, we need that so bad because the relationship again, as I said earlier, we are relational uh, being. Uh, we 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 are created to long for love. being in relationship, and that mm -hmm. love is a is a connector. Love yeah. is a, is is a magnet which makes that relationship we have born with function. You know, uh, uh, so as you are saying, that is very important. So I was remembering as we, as we close. Uh, uh, let's read uh, back to John sixteen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you just one experience. 
uh, when you you have that uh, you know journey with the Lord in the Holy Spirit to, to show you who is this we're talking about. Uh, you will have uh, that assurance also that loving somebody is possible. Why? Because you have the lover in you. Amen. Amen. And he doesn't Amen. love in a period and then uh, uh, hatred comes. You know, like we know yeah. there is this, uh, they call it a, 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 a psycho domestic violence, for example. I'll give you an example. There is this a chain. You know, you are loved it today and tomorrow, and then a little tension start building, and then again uh, another fight, and then you start again. You know, oh sorry, and I didn't mean to, and then love a little bit, and tension starts again, again another mistake. Yeah, we are not rolling in that kind of ring, yeah. that kind of chain. Our Savior is love itself because yeah. he is God. God is mm -hmm. love. So he can't have moments of hatred. He can't have <laughs> moments of, uh, oh, I thought you're going to love me this time. And, uh, you know, he doesn't have, he just, he is. He yeah. just is. Yeah, he just is. Amen. Oh, God. So as we close, we want you to really not take this as they're just talking. Oh, is it said than done? I mean, it tests and see. Yes. It's so real. The things of God is literally you to test all by yourself, because you can you can you can have the joy of the Lord through me. It's <laughs> is you to go and access it. So He says yeah. like this, John sixteen or fifteen. This is Jesus again. He say, "All things that the Father has are mine." Mm -hmm. Because of this, I say that he, now the spirit, will take you from what is mine and will reveal it to you. To you. Mm -hmm. so we're talking about love he gonna, and peace. He's going to reveal this to, to you. Because he, you will know it. You will know it. Mm -hmm. so, and you, yeah. as, as, as the sister was saying, we, you can't fake it. No. And you would try to hate, it's just not going to come out. <laughs> <laughs> if you have a moment, you'll be brought back into line with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You just can't fake it. No, no. Mm -hmm. So the revealing of the peace is real. The revealing of the love is real. And for those who are watching and listening as we close, we know, you know, in this life, uh, Jesus came. That's why he came to mend the broken heart. Yes. You know, why the world is so broken? Because the God of this world, that's what his specialty Yes. Breaking, stealing, destroying. Mm -hmm. He doesn't know any better but that. Yes. Jesus came to mend us, to yes. heal us, to yes. restore mm -hmm. us. Yes. He said, by the spirit, you're going to have me revealed, the healer, the mm -hmm. lover. You know, mm -hmm. that very Jesus of whom the Peter and the John, they slept in the same room and walked around when fishing and did the miracles together. That very Jesus who was crucified, who went mm -hmm. down in hell and did you all those miracles. Again. The mm -hmm. very same Jesus. He yeah. told the disciples that wait here a little longer. I will be right back. Yes. So he came right back. Through the spirit of, yeah. That's where we need to, to keep. You love Jesus, just dwell in him. He will reveal to you. Now, I had an experience one time for those who long to be visited by Jesus. There's a, there, there is a night I really, really, that I will never forget. He absolutely showed himself up. And how you're going to know this is Jesus? Just the love he brings in the room. If oh, hallelujah. You, know, you will know. Or, you will know. or whatever, in the hospital. I mean, yes, you will know this is yes. him. The hallelujah. love comes from him. Yes. I mean, he just, Oh, he just, you, you would love him just like that. Mm -hmm. Then mm -hmm. you will know this is the Jesus. Yes. The Bible talk about 
his love. And you can't think of anything but just admire. Yes. And wanting him to stay there so you can enjoy their presence. <laughs> So it is real, y'all. So thank you so much for listening to us. Let the Holy Spirit reveal Jesus as John 16, 15, and 16 say, He is the revealer of our love, the lover of our eternal life. You know, we women love to be loved somehow. And we we need to, even our men, they not they they desire that too. Yes. But we have the love of our eternal life, not the love yes. of this life. So may the Holy Spirit reveal him to you today, tomorrow, however you're going to prepare. Amen. Him, amen. But be ye prepared because mm -hmm. he is real and he will absolutely do what the word says. As we read Ezekiel, can you imagine how many years were those? Long time. Hallelujah. Yes. If he promised, that means he will do it. Yes. Yes. Glory to God. So you are not an orphan. You are not a reject. Yes, the relationship maybe you are broke from your so called your loved one, but he, he or she is no longer with you. But again, as we said, he is eternally with us. He will yes. never leave you nor forsake. And his love is irresistible. Amen. Amen forever glory to god so i will let you, my sister close the session today and uh we thank the lord for having us do what we did today we will be back for part two, three for more of this more of the characters of this one hall yes <laughs> yes amen <laughs> go ahead and close and uh, thank you so much viewers we will be back next time yeah. Amen. Amen. I'm just going to pray for my, for the viewers as I'm closing. Father God, I just want to thank you for the viewers that you allowed them to hear the words that you put in, in our hearts, oh Lord. Thank you for reminding us about your very own Holy Spirit, who you have freely given to us almighty god mm -hmm. lord i just pray for the ones who are broken hearted right now lord i pray that you speak to them you fill their hearts oh lord you revive them and that they will experience the peace that we've been talking about through your holy spirit mm -hmm. i'm praying that for those who are broken hearted and they 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 are being uh betrayed by people that they love oh lord i just pray that you will heal those hearts in the name of jesus mm -hmm. i pray that your love will surround them they will know that you are there with them mm -hmm. to guide them to teach them about you mm -hmm. and that lord you will lead them into knowing you and have a fellowship with you yes. forever and ever lord so they can enjoy your goodness they can enjoy your love your peace your joy they can enjoy your presence and what you have offered on the cross almighty god yes, lord. lord i just leave everybody in your hands lord as we are winding up lord may your holy spirit be with us guide us and lead us and continue to grow it grow us in you almighty god yes. until we meet again mm -hmm. in jesus name i pray amen and amen amen and amen amen amen, amen. thank you everybody